We're going to be replacing the fan motor, exterior fan motor on this package unit. It is a heat pump. It's pretty easy to do. Um, there's a couple things you're going to need on this. Uh, I'll show you the. Going to be replacing the motor and the run capacitor. Uh, the motor is going to be marked with the horsepower. Um, and the run capacitor is going to be matched up. Um, you can get that right off of the motor, what you need, or ask whoever you're getting the motor from for the right capacitor for the electrical. We make sure we uh, remove all the bolts on the exterior cage that holds the fan motor to the unit. And then we're going to remove these four bolts once we get our nuts once we get this unit out so that we can replace that motor that's in there really important before you start anything on this unit is to make sure that this disconnect box or the unit has no power full power make sure there's no power really important Okay, on the wiring of these units, uh, your box, whatever brand it is you're using, uh, it's going to give you the wiring diagram, like a quarter horsepower is going to use the black and red. Make sure you track back where your wires are on your original units uh, so you know where to run to. Um, real important, um, if at all possible, you want to run uh, the two wires you're going to be using on a heat pump all the way back to the board, use these, try to avoid clipping the wires and wire nutting these at all possible, uh, but you want to try to run these back. Um, so if it's a straight cool, you're going to run it back to your uh, contactor, uh, one to your contactor, one to your board. Um, if it is on a heat pump, um, most of the time, your two brown wires are going to run back to your run capacitor. Again, make sure you're always discharging that run capacitor. Uh, that should take care of the wiring. Just feed it back through, wire it up, and you should be good to go. Box will tell you everything. Run cap size to the horsepower. If you have any questions, just ask the guys that you're buying the motor from. Uh, or shoot me a question, I'll be happy to answer it. We want to get to this motor. Got all those screws out around there. Basically, just flip it over. Give you a pretty good work surface. This blade's coming off here. We need to pull this screw out. Um, probably want to lube this beforehand before you even start. Put a little WD-40 um, or something to bust away that rust if there's anything in there. Make it a little bit easier on yourself. This is where the wire's running. We're going to replace that all the way back down. This is what the run cap looks like. You're going to be running both brown wires to this. Always on the old one when you're taking it out because you will get shocked. Make sure you lay a screwdriver or something across it. This will uh, discharge anything out of the run capacitor. Very important. Discharge your run caps. Discharge your run caps on the old one. Make sure, make sure you discharge this run cap. Lay your screwdriver across from contact to contact points and that will discharge. Sometimes these fans can be a real bear. Um, I always put some kind of uh, rust break or 
WD-40 in before I even try to remove it and let it set for a little bit. Go ahead and get these last couple of uh, nuts off. And then you can see the motor comes right off. Here's the old motor. It's out. Keep this. You're going to need it to feed the wires back through. Keep everything clean. Keep your wires safe. All right, a couple things on this motor. Um, on the run cap, your two brown wires are going to be running back to this run capacitor, not to the old capacitor. Really important, you want to replace this run capacitor. Your motor, we want to make sure that it is at the same height as your last blade. So you want to measure from here to the top of your collar and make sure that that blade gets put back on the motor at the same height. These are your power wires. Box will tell us we're going to use two out of the three. In our case, we're going to use the red and the white, red and the black. We're going to cap the white. These wires right here are the direction of the fan blade, whether it's this way, clockwise, counterclockwise. Um, this is going to determine it. We always want air pulling away from the unit, not pushing in. All right, so we're putting the fan back together. Um, we've got it on the outside skirt. We've got our nuts back on. Our directionals are up here. After we make sure that the fan's spinning in the right direction we'll get that put back down and tied up with wire ties so it looks good and it's not out in the elements uh, we've run our wires back through the black tubing fed it back through here we're just getting ready to put these uh, nuts back in uh, to hold this uh, skirting and screen on the top of this so we've got the motor back on connected to the outside um, we're connecting it back with these screws back to uh, the unit itself. We want to make sure they're all secure. Here's our rotation wires. We'll leave those out. We'll tuck them away and uh, inside and we'll tighten those up with some wire ties after we verify the direction of the blade. Real important. Quick example of the rotation of the blades being the wrong way. Uh, if I just put a bag up there, you see that it's running the wrong way. We're just going to switch these wires around. They'll be blowing the right way. Make sure you turn off the power. Here's all the tools that we needed for this job. Um, the wire ties, uh, pretty much a must. The drill, not so much, just helps out with the arm a little bit, uh, but everything else is right there. Um, always kill the power whenever you're touching any electrical. Remember to pull it. There's our fan running. There's our reversing wires put back in. Here's the unit, wire ties. Everything's cleaned up. Everything looks really good. I uh, hope this helped out. Um, I'll put some links down below to some parts.